You've probably heard of a not-so-little franchise by the name of Haruhi Suzumiya. Or, I guess, of... of Haruhi Suzumiya. Because, you know, like, the titles are all different ofs. Wavering, disappearance, f Sorry, wrong folder. The explosive popularity of Haruhi... Fuck. Ah, I knew that was gonna fall. The explosive popularity of Haruhi Suzumiya set ablaze the great trend of wacky meta light novels with ever-growing titles and heavy need of some workshopping. Though at this point jokes about their overly verbose names are just as tired and unfunny as the series themselves. Haruhi also arguably kickstarted KyoAni's rise to anime studio stardom, from which it then made the wise decision to own its own IPs and give its staff livable working conditions, a revolutionary idea in the field of animation. Oftentimes the stage is set for an influential series to be superseded by that which it spawned, developing the style and ideas into something even better, alongside the repetition and development of such ideas in new media, also sometimes diminishing the enjoyment of visiting the more dated originator, in what's often called Seinfeld isn't funny by people who spend too much time on TV tropes. But you know what? In spite of all its successors, Haruhi still far outperforms all that aimed to cop its style. Though that is just my opinion, even if it is right. Creative and funny, Haruhi sparked hype for good reason, and never used meta as a way to hand wave lazy writing with that oh so insufferable wink and nod to the viewer. The series instead is astoundingly clever and endlessly rewatchable, both through its smart writing, strong characterization, as well as the hearty life KyoAni breathed into the text. Granted, I am partially assuming merit of the original light novels. Though the few I read were excellent, I have only read a few. For what little I read, if I am going to read nowadays, I'm at least going to read something that I can use to pretend I'm intelligent. So for how excellent the source material is, and how even more excellently er, the adaptation built upon that, culminating in the 2 hour 40 minute cum that is the disappearance movie following the episodes long edging of the infamous Endless 8, for how excellent it is, it's no surprise that people wanted more. Though disappearance might be the best possible stopping point to bid farewell, if my brief stint of funeral crashing has taught me anything, it's that no one likes to say goodbye. Wait, you guys... <laughs> aren't here to party? <laughs> Especially if the source material is still going strong. Or, well, I mean, it's, like, still going, technically, so there's that, at least. So step with me into my time machine, and let's step back to the far, far off year of 2014. Egg jokes were a hot market. No use crying over spilled eggs. <laughs> people briefly pretended to care about the least trigger trigger anime, a series so unmemorable that the only scene it's remembered for is the scene least representative of what the show is actually like, <laughs> and in a groundbreaking new scientific discovery, a new visual form of melatonin was invented but quickly taken off the market for being too effective. Around this time, a young core had somehow taken the roundabout, more pretentious method of anime introduction by watching the other SAO and quickly spiraled down the drain into anime obsession, catching whatever classics he could get his hands on, except for the ones you can actually get views with. I watched Haruhi and instantly loved it, following the strange but interesting advice of Certified Frosty himself to watch the Mikuru movie episode as an episode zero of sorts, to introduce yourself to the strange insanity that awaits before watching chronological order, immediately hooking me for a series unlike anything I had seen prior, and in this case not just because I was astounded there were animated series in existence with linear narratives other than superhero shows and over the garden wall. I very quickly blazed through the series, rewatching it not long after, and even participating in dialogue on Reddit, the ideal place for all anime-related discussion that I immediately abandoned the second I found friends. So, prior to being NTR'd into accepting the inevitable inconclusiveness of Nippon's noteworthy negligibility negative nifty niche NordVPN as the proud sponsor of this video, in short, I wasn't ready to be stuck waiting. And after only a short period of breathlessly refreshing ANN the Haruhi subreddit, whenever it occasionally crossed my mind, it seemed that me and many others might not have to endure the suffering too much longer. In the distance was a small shimmer, a faint glimmer of hope. Soon we would be able to dance that grand Haruhi dance without fear of derisive words from the most definitely closely related shonen fans at our lack of extensive episodes. May 2014, and the very succinct and, might I say, aptly named Haruhi.com launches a mysterious event. Its name? Haruhi Hunting. That name was ever elusive. What exactly was a Haruhi hunt, even? 
What did that signify? Was it merely a search for that bombastic, beloved leading woman, fictional though she was? Or could this have an even deeper meaning? Were they trying to tell us, tell me something? Could this be a hunt for the very Haruhi we all long for? For that third season? Like a hunter-gatherer of old times, were we to finally entrap our prey? In this case, that prey being a continuation of the iconic IP that so many have grown to love and held faithful to, in spite of the likelihood of a fresh follow-up seeming ever more unlikely. Excited murmurs coursed through the online discourse. What could this mean? What could this possibly be? Then, before there was even time for speculation, the game was afoot. Haruhi hunting, setting aside the potential metaphorical implications, was indeed a Haruhi hunt. A huge event that would bridge the gap between fiction and reality itself. The game was simple. Scattered across all of Japan, 707 frames lied. The fan's mission? find those frames, and slowly reassemble them, piecing together a new animated music video by Kyoto Animation. That's the very studio that produced the original anime, returning again! All new footage! One could only imagine what this might mean. Bit by bit, our noble Japanese brethren ventured out into the wide world in search of those 707 frames, as we were forced to watch this event unfold from the sidelines. Billboards, flyers, magazines, who knew where Haruhi was hiding? And what's worse, the clock was ticking. Haruhi wouldn't wait forever, but those pious fans searched high and low in the name of the true god, finding the images and photographing the QR code-bearing frame and uploading it to the website. Like unlocking a single door in a maze-like mansion, the individual efforts seemed to open up so little, but through the united endeavors, gradually the music video began to gain life. Gaps were filled bit by bit by way of this painfully difficult mission of going outside. At least until someone on 4chan figured out the code and ripped every frame from the website. The fanbase was bubbling with excitement as completion began to look imminent. With time to spare, the video was complete, these physical efforts a clear sign of the still-living excitement for the IP. Sure, some said it was nothing, to not get overly excited for fear of letdown, though they too were clearly withholding the hype within them. How could it possibly not be something major? That's ridiculous, insane, absolutely unthinkable. To send fans on a fruitless mission in their time of greatest weakness would be the ultimate act of sadistic cruelty. So it just had to be something big. And it certainly was. It was something big, about 20 inches wide and 30 inches tall. This something was a pachinko machine. Fuck. Now, let me press my pause button here. What exactly is a pachinko machine, and what the hell does it have to do with Haruhi? Well, pachinko is an arcade game that is definitely not just gambling with a legal loophole that goes ignored because of how much money it makes. Look, I just go and exchange my money for these little balls, and then I drop my balls... And then I drop them into the machine, and there's some flashing lights, and... Wow, I won! Look at that! Now I can exchange my balls for a special prize, and... Huh. Interesting, right across the street there is a totally unrelated business that is willing to purchase my prize for a fair cash exchange rate. Well, how about that? The word pachinko comes from the Japanese word pachi pachi, an onomatopoeia for the footsteps of a 40 year old after he's kicked out of the house for his addiction to this glorified money fire. As expected of the other business besides drugs and gacha built on creating addicts and separating them from their money, pachinko makes approximately one fuck ton gazillion dollars a year. And as such, it's no surprise that every company worth their two cents, sorry, I mean two steel balls to be exchanged for a unique prize, wants a piece of the pie. 
Anime and game themed pachinko machines are at this point a mainstay of those loud, bright, and sweaty despair chambers, with properties like Evangelion, Dynasty Warriors, and Fist of the North Star pulling in hundreds of millions in this market alone. It's no surprise that Haruhi 2 would seek to answer the cacophonous call of dollar signs, but I think you can agree it would seem a bit strange to send out a countrywide call to action for what is essentially an insert money box with some flashing lights on it. Actually, it makes a lot more sense when I say it that way. The truth is, all the signs were there. Already so long ago as 2014, it had been years since the last light novel, of which anime are usually utilized to promote the sales of. The connection to Pachinko was fairly clear from the get-go in the marketing and company connections. Those initial false prophets were, in fact, the ones wise enough to know not to be misled, thanks to their uncommon wisdom of actually looking into something for a second before getting excited. But it simply seemed unreal. How could they tease in such a way? Why would they do that? They had to know they were stoking the flames. As much as I wanted to repress my longing, I couldn't help but get swept up in the brief thought that maybe it was something more. After all, why in Haruhi's name would you make such a hullabaloo over a fucking pachinko machine? With a sense of collective exhaustion, the discussion quickly dissipated as everyone came to realize that our brief spark of hope was without merit. The series once more fading away to little more than one of those songs literally everyone sings at anime karaoke. The Haruhi hunt was over, and here my heart was just as empty. No, more than before the excitement started. To further rub salt in the wound, that fresh KyoAni music video doesn't even look good. As the depth of disappointment and sorrow set in, I began to grapple with my inner demons. What was this all for anyway? Why did I think it was worth putting my faith in anything? Why did I let myself trust in the hype, allow my feeble heart to briefly entertain a spark of hope? I was devastated, totally shattered. Yes, I did watch the shitty spin-off anime. What else did I have? In desperation, I briefly entertained the idea of consuming other media, but no, no, Harhi was all I had. I had trusted in God, but with that trust shattered, all sense of meaning and purpose was lost. As the years passed, this painful point in Haru history slowly faded into the annals of time. Like my attempt at writing an abridged video, it became little but a brief and gladly forgotten memory, only occasionally to have the wound reopened by someone who still hasn't even watched the second season. I eventually realized that other anime existed, and once again returned to a life of relative normalcy, going about the days happy and content thanks to my newfound wisdom. I knew now not to get swept up in unreasonable hope, not to set myself up for disappointment. I had learned my lesson. Whoa, whoa, what? A new Haruhi light novel after almost a decade? That, that's insane, hold on. They say there's a special Haruhi announcement coming. Could it be? I haven't learned my lesson. Thanks for watching. This is a big experiment and very out of the norm for the kinds of videos I usually make, but I hope it was fun to watch. Let me know if you'd like to see more out of the box videos like this one in the future. I definitely want to mix my content up more as holding to strictly analysis only has been getting a bit stale. Also, I'm live right now on twitch.tv slash core's name is too short. I'll be talking with chat, answering questions, memeing around, and maybe even getting a bit intoxicated. So stop on by, it'll be a good time. If you enjoy what I do, please consider supporting me on Patreon like these lovely folks on screen now. Thank you for your generous contributions, and with all that said, I will see you in the next one.